everyone else who's joined from elsewhere and good evening if you're good evening it's nice to have you all on presentation it's our webinar before the release of our new pu for 2024 so we have a little quick webinar it's going to be a very casual chat chat webinar i'm going to go from the presentation to live and back to the presentation and the title of this webinar was and um, actually i used the word true automation i thought i'd be a little bit uh, cynical about that one because you read all the time uh this automation there's automation but what is real automation and what does it mean you know to have true automation as opposed to just the word the buzzword automation okay so as you well know um the Sage have released a 2024 PU2 release. Uh, came out on on on, on the 31st. Uh, you can download that. Our existing version does still work with it, but we thought we'd add a few features and we add a few timers and a few automation areas that we could put in. Um, you know, with the SFTP interface we've written, it's opened up a whole for us where we can get stuff automatically from the bank and and not <laughs> the integration. Okay, so I'm gonna have the dogs barking every now and again. I could I can't control them. They tend to be five of them and they tend to bark why. But anyway, on a serious note, we have added a whole bunch of features to the to the uh cash book to handle true automation. So before I go into that, I you just elaborate on the world around us on Sage. Um, I believe we had a great tea pack. Uh, it was nice to have Sage doing the keynote. Um, I think that was important for us to have some kind of uh, a, a, a message from Sage that gave us the idea we have a future. And I think it did great for the market because in the last few months, Perisoft have had a very good few months and we have a very good renewal rate. So people are not losing faith in the product. They do see a future for it in the next few years, 10, 15 years, maybe. I'm only going to be 84 then, so I'll probably still be working, I hope, because that means my brain is not over the hill, but that's on a separate issue. My wife's making comments in the background. Don't worry, darling, I'll be fine. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but on a, on, a, on a serious note, um, they are looking at a great future with 300 in South Africa and Africa. They've toned down a little bit on the intact side because they realize our features are just way ahead of, of all the other products. And I'm not just talking about uh, Intact, I'm talking about all the other products. And we have a very strong base of, of, of uh, solution providers like yourselves that are so knowledgeable that it's very difficult to replace that. That takes time to replace. So we're very happy with the market, very happy with TPAC. I believe they're going to have it in Joburg or somewhere closer by, which will be a good thing for us and 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 easy to get to but thank you doug and thank you with the tpac team for doing this because it does give us a nice uh, a, a nice get together and makes people feel that there's a product being supported properly great okay so let's go straight into presentation. okay so this is going to be a presentation some of it's going to be on the on the screen uh, as a presentation with a video and some of it's going to be live which is I enjoy the live part more than the actual videos. Okay, so ah, introduction by Bobby Perel. You see, I'm still around. I have not retired. In spite of all the rumors, I'm still here. Cashbook, right. Okay, so we have added one extra feature in Cashbook um, for our, F, um, our EFT. And that is when you modify or edit your EFT miscodes um, in, in, in Cashbook, you're allowed to then run a, a quick update which will look at all unposted batches in Cashbook that are EFT batches and update them with the latest changes you've made in the, in, in the miscode uh, um, 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 database um, tables. Now, the whole point of this was what we were doing before was when you modified something here, we would then, before you created the EFT batch, it would say to you, do you want to regenerate or update the EFT at the actual batch control point? That was a bit cumbersome. So we brought it to this area rather, because if you're going to change it here, why should it not go to the batches and update your batches correctly there? We have, we have in, on, on, on the, I will tell you our roadmap at the end of this um, presentation as to where we're going with EFT. We've had a few requests, one of them being authorizations and different levels of authorizations. So we'll discuss it at the end of the presentation and we will be putting them into the system as well in the future. Okay, I'm going to, each time I'm going to move on, I'm going to ask questions and see if you have any questions. So before I move on on this EFT one, I presume there's no questions at this point in time. 
good, nothing. Great. Okay. Okay, so auto update miscellaneous codes. Okay, here would be the actual updating of the miscellaneous codes. Am I right, Natalie? I see you put the slide in. Uh, is this yes. to show once you run it? Uh, so this is also vice Another. versa. So if you update it here, it, it will also ask if you want to uh, use these settings. Am I correct, Karita? Yes. So if you okay. drill down and you uh, fill it in here, it will also ask if you want to add that to the miscellaneous code to the bank account. Yeah. Okay, which is basically on the fly, which we call on the fly. It always sounds yes. a bit weird on the fly. You know, it sounds like you've got a fly trap. But I mean, so what you're saying is if you're changing your miscodes in details in the batch entry, it will then let you update it itself in the actual miscode tables. Okay, yes. Cool. Yeah. So it's both ways, which is a very nice feature. Thank you, Karita. It really does help. Okay. Right, straight into our next thing, which is the, um, the EFT feature. As you well know, we, we wrote this new EFT system, which allows you to upload the EFT straight to the bank, and the bank then fetches it and posts it on their side and then sends a response file. At the moment, we've got two banks on this at the moment, which is the Standard Bank and Ned Bank. Um, I know Aubrey's on the call. Um, Aubrey, we actually I try to phone you and tell you that we had a problem um, with APSA in that they haven't done the response file properly yet. But I was going to tell you that we do have the upload available for you to go up to their system, but they don't have a response file. So when you go up, you're going to have to post it as opposed to wait for the response file. Because the way the system okay. works at the moment, but thanks, Arby. Okay, so the way the system works, it's really nice, is that to your batch straight into to, to cash book. It can go to RAP, you can whatever the batch needs to be done. And when you post the batch, it goes into a provisional post uh, um, status and uploads the file to an SFTP folder that could be either on your server or on the bank server depending on what the bank offers. So that's all you have to do. You don't have to actually log into your online banking or anything and import automatically sends the file to the bank. The bank will then process it and it will then wait for a response. For and you can then, when you repost it, um, it will then pick up that response file and go from provisionally posted, because it was still waiting for a response file, to properly posted. If there were any rejections in the batch, from the bank, like invalid bank codes or invalid accounts or um, after cutoff points or et cetera, it would then create an error batch with those and post the rest correctly. Now, the whole point of the response file is when you post a thousand checks or a thousand payments to the bank, in the old days, you wouldn't know what was rejected because you'd post it in cash book. And what would happen is you'd then get a, a recon from the bank and then you'd see on the recon which entries did not go through. This way, you don't do that. It automatically creates an error batch for you and notifies you of the proper errors in the order trails. Okay, that is really much, much more efficient, as you can well imagine, doing a thousand entries and wondering which ones never went through is a very complex affair. So this response file feature is, is unique to Cashbook. I don't know what other systems do it. And the reason I say it's unique book is because some banks don't even have a response file written in the, on their side, like APSA. They still have to do that. It's a very modern and a very nice feature for clients. I'm going to run the video in a minute because what happens now, what we've done is when the PU, we've added a timer. So what happens is the batch, and you can then go and have tea. You don't have to worry about reposting it when the response file arrives. What the timer does, it will two minutes or whatever minutes you set here. You can see over here, you can set your timer interval. It will then look for the response file automatically. And then when it's got the response file, it will post the batch. And that is really cool. So I'm going to run the video. Okay. I'm going to run the video find the video, it's over here, there we go. And you're gonna see this in the video. Now it's a little bit small here, but I think you can read it. So here we're posting the batch, okay? The batch then will be put into the folder here once it's posted, okay? There we go, there's the batch. Now that's the transactions that have been put 
say close. <laughs> okay, now the batch is sitting in the in the out box in the out folder. Okay, this folder is normally not to the client because it's got security on. And what happens is when the batch is posted on the mainframe side or on the bank side, it response file. And here is the response file of that particular batch. And you can see three of the entries were accepted and two were the wrong codes. What it does then in Cashbook, it automatically picks it up without any user inter inter um, 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 interference and it will automatically post that batch. So you don't have to worry about when is the response file arriving. It's all done for you beautifully. This one you can see created the posting sequence and there were two errors as your error batch. Okay, that was pretty quick, but you can run this yourself if you download this presentation we've given you. You can download this presentation and actually run it yourselves and show the client how it works. Now remember, these folders on the right hand side here, you wouldn't see them normally. They would have security and the client that's posting would not know about this at all. The other thing is that you have is good security because now you don't have to even export. There's no interference with the batch that you're exporting. So sometimes people were worried that when you create the export batch, you don't want someone to start editing that batch and changing the account code for themselves or posting the money to themselves. The security is much better like this. There's no user interference. OK, and of course, lastly, the efficiency of posting over X number of payments is super efficient because now you'll get an error batch showing you what was not posted. That is true, what I call true automation. No interference from anybody. The only thing you do is you'd enter the batch yourselves in Cashbook. Now um, remember, of course, yes, go for it, Natalie. Uh, Derek, Derek has a question. He has his hand up. Bobby, uh, thanks, Natalie. Hi, Bob. Um, I just want to. Hi, Derek. How are you? Good <laughs> um, I want to find out that FTP secure. Uh, how's your folder. How's your um, How's your uh, your your iPad? It's very good. Thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate that. Okay, really, go really appreciate that. Uh, that yeah, FTP no, secure uh, folder can that sit on a um, a separate uh, server or uh, like a um, a different machine, not your normal uh, Sage machines or your Sage server, uh, just for security sake. Because I was discussing this with a, a client yesterday or a um, the IT provider for a client of mine, and they were they've got some reservations about the FTP um, keys and things. Um, they say that it's not that secure. So of course I, they would I've, not understand. Sorry, Derek, I'm not being sarcastic. No, no, hundreds. Yeah. So uh, they were talking I fully about. Agree a, with you. They were talking about having a um what you what you've got this other um man not a windows a linux box they want to be able to put uh, put those uh, files into a linux box and then talk to the bank would that be possible or not okay okay i think i think wayne can explain that a better than i can um wayne do you want to come in here and just tell them how it actually would work um with regard to the sftp yeah, look, I don't, I don't know Linux, so that sounds like a yeah, no. anti-Microsoft opinion coming from yeah, a no. Linux so, fan. Sorry, Wayne. What they want to do is they want to just keep the the um, the files out of the the Windows environment, um, yeah. especially for the um, for the banks. They are a um, a company that specializes in into um, uh, what's it um, security. Okay, so they are saying this private key. Um, I see you've got it now as a private. It's previously the the presentation had a public key on there. Um, it was saying something about a public key. Your uh, document that says how to uh, understand the SFTP um, process. So yeah, no, that's that, right, Derek. The, the, there'll always be two keys, a private and a public. Okay, so uh, one would they go. Were, they were asking me, can they buy a, a key because uh, it's more secure? And they buy a key. Well, what I what I can say is that on the Linux box, if there is an SFTP hosting solution that will run on Linux, and I'm pretty yeah. sure there is, and that would be fine. Okay. I mean, it would just use Internet Protocol, and the bank would pick up and drop onto the Linux box, and the Windows machine would need to see the Linux box to retrieve it. Yes, that, they could do that. So that. That's what they want to do. Just to 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 separate the the whole thing and to make it more secure. 
more secure. They, yeah. You know, they are saying we uh, we know things are so um, open and it can be can be hacked and um, they can they've actually sent me a, a, a whole thing that how these SFTPs can be penetrated and hacked and things like that. So obviously these guys are jacked up with uh, internet security and they were saying this is all nice and and good. But even though you've got RSA 32 or 165 or whatever the, those codes are, it can be can be hacked. So they are concerned, and the customer that we want to put this on, we are talking about millions going through on uh, EFTs. So they don't want to uh, be with the egg in, egg on their face saying, "Listen, yeah, we've been hacked, and all the money is out of the bank." You see, so that's what yeah, we're concerned. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so what are they doing at the moment? No, we don't do that. They they've got a manual. They've got manual EFTs where they upload the file to the bank, and it gets processed. Okay, but hold and on. Somebody hold needs on, to approve on. it. Yeah. So what you, so what you're saying is they're still exporting it and then importing it using the online banking. Yes. And then approving. So that's even more instant. Then approving it at the bank. Uh, yeah. Well, obviously you've got the yeah. two approvers that logs into the bank. Uh, with that's the, and they're with NetBank. They, yes. NetBank actually phoned us. We had a meeting to say, listen here, this is what NetBank can do for them because they've got, on a weekly basis, over 3,000 um, staff to pay. They're, they're, um, it's in, in the mining industry. So there's a lot of uh, staff to, payments going through. So they want to reduce the cost for the client. And I told them, but we need to do this. And they say, yeah, that's all good and fine. But then the IT people said yesterday, we need to make sure that it's 100% secure or 99%. Okay, so not- what... Okay, so the IT people should be able to realize that when we use the um, the different passwords and the different um, the different validations, etc., that they have been set up as either two two what's it two two tier authentication, two authentication, yeah, yeah, two, two factor, factor authenticator, etc. That should be secure enough, and to hack yeah. that, they're going to have to know how to get into those passwords. Um, I don't, I haven't heard people being able to break it like that easily. Secondly, that server, that the, the path to their to their server can be anywhere. Yeah. And I'm sure Linux can handle that. So as long as you can see the folder or whatever on the Linux box, surely it will be able to go there. And um, remember that the bank can also hold the server. The bank True. itself can have their own. Now, obviously, the bank doesn't want to get hacked. Yeah. So their server, they wouldn't open up their server to somebody if they think it's going to be hacked. So I would definitely say to NetBank, um, if you if you want to, can we upload it to your server? And then we'll be happier, even more yeah. happy that it won't be hacked. But I would actually say, to be honest, I would say to the IT guys, you've read about how to hack things. Mm. What we'll do is create the folder. Let's see if you can hack it. <laughs> yeah. No, I the will. In the uh, eating. Yeah, I will definitely do that. But yeah, so I'm I'm happy to see that private key because they were they were concerned about the the key that we basically put in, in this setup. Okay. Um, and they asked me, can they buy? It's it's more safe than you buy your key than rather get a key from from the bank um, to to authenticate these things. If you buy a private key. You basically give that to the bank and you say, here's that's my key, and nobody else can use it. So, Correct. That's um, what, but that's how you do it. But that's how you would set up your actual SFTP in the first place. You'd run, uh, was it Red X, um, uh, Wayne? Yeah, that the server, there is a, there's, there's a few ways to create the keys. I've never heard that someone can buy the keys, but if you use two factor authentication and you create a user with a password and a key with a password, and mm-hmm. only you've got that private key and the public key you give to the bank. I've never heard of that yeah. being hacked, to be honest. Okay. I mean, that's well, what the banks guys, are using that level. They are specializing with in this, and obviously and they, they get they a lot of things. Yeah, they know they know what they're talking about. Um, yeah, yeah, I yeah. believe them. Um, so, but yeah, I'm pretty I sure also, Linux can be hacked at the same time then, because someone originally wrote the software always knows the, the back the doors backing. and the loopholes. Yeah, yeah. No, hundreds. Okay, I was just uh, just needed to confirm oh, this because I need to. Mm-hmm. I wanted to get them on the call, but they would have uh, taken over the, the whole presentation. And I think after no, you that can't, as well, so. can't. No, <laughs> no, you can. No, Dave, we don't mind. You know, you you, but, you can always email us with your new yeah. iPad. You know, 
Ja, oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 so, Derek, I was very happy you won the iPad. I can't lie. Oh, I mean, well done, man. You know, thank you. Bobby. I'll never forget the tennis game we had in Swaziland. You know, where you hit the ball and beat me up a bit, and I thought I'll get revenge. But it was nice to give you something back. You know what thank I mean? Only <laughs> joking, okay, Derek. No, you, you I'm teasing you a little. Thanks, Bobby. No, no, no. <laughs> but let me finish on what you're saying, and I think yeah. this is important what you're bringing up because people are really worried about the cyber stuff out yes, there and, tech, and there's yeah. even insurance you can get but well, let me put it this way to you when the guys were exporting and importing remember that in between their export and the in somebody add that file and yeah. actually hack that that's very insecure and mm. i've got clients now that are wanting to use the system because two things that they like the first thing is they like the the, the sftp with the with the two-factor authentication or whatever you want to put in and yeah. that they can put that on the bank server as well because they believe the bank should be secure and the other thing they like is that there's no insurance here the people post the batch and they don't even see the transactions they go up to somewhere else yeah. so no one can and of course the third last thing which i have to repeat again is a response file the response file back and then they know exactly and again when you're doing 3,000 entries and you don't know which ones have been rejected sure. it's normal of time but i like they like the idea and i'm going to repeat this over that nobody can interfere with this file it's not okay. get into a folder like we're doing at the moment where you then take that file from the folder so somebody else can interfere and, and there's always a chance of that's easier hacking than anything but good question by the way Thank Good you. question. All right. Thanks. I believe so that the future, yeah, no, lacquer, and I also believe in the future people are going to use this more and more because when you open up this, then yeah. open up which is one machine, which is the bank feeds to the to to the recon program to this. Correct. Great. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Continue. Thanks. Right. Okay. So what we've then realized by using this uh, this this new SFTP uploader bank itself that if you're going to deal with the banks and they're going to send you files, we can then um, automatically bring in statements and, and, and bring in your recons and, and, and you don't have to actually go and start exporting from the bank and worry about the range you're exporting and if it's the right transactions, if it's all of them, the last week, last month, blah, blah, blah. And although we're calling it pay direct here, I will explain why, but it's also not just pay direct, okay? And what it is now is we've added a timer to Rec Express as well. And in Rec Express, you could have, oh, here we've got 10 or 12 banks, okay, listed here. And what you can now do is you can say to it, you can say to it automatically, because what you can do with, 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 the, um, with the bank statements is you can tell the bank, now that they've got an SFTP download available, their bank, they put into their bank program a, a, a feature that will then send the statement to the client automatically. Now, that's a really powerful feature because now you don't have to even worry about where to fetch and when to fetch. Okay, so what it does is, as I explained in our last demo, it sends the file into a folder. And that folder, then you can retrieve the bank statement daily, hourly, even minutely okay so when you have a, a, a say if, uh, if, when you want to make sure that payments are received from a client on the same hour or same day you can now go and retrieve a provisional statement that you tell the bank to download into the folder into sftp hourly or half hourly or even 10 minute i think the, the shortest interval that I was speaking to the banks about was 10 or 15 minutes. And what they do is every 10 or 15 minutes, their machine, their, their server sends the file into a folder. We then added a timer at the request of another client. Okay. And I'm obviously I'm grateful for their, for their request to actually do, as you can see, the whole process retrieve, renumber, create, post, and even post the recon and even clear it all in one shot using a timer okay so this is really nice so for example i'm just going to see what the next slide is okay for example if you run the timer it will then retrieve the statement from all the folders so you've got 10 banks okay and they're going to upload 10 statements 
it will automatically go and fetch those statements for you. No user interference, true automation, I call it. Okay, I love the word true automation. It will retrieve all the statements for you. Okay, it will retrieve them. Here's a nice flow chart. So it retrieves the statements, puts them into your temporary area. Then it picks up the range. Now, let me explain the difference between retrieve and process. It will retrieve the files into a temporary area. Okay, that temporary area is up to date every day. Okay, but when you want to do a certain month end, you might only want to do a process of a certain time period. So, for example, you might be in the middle of, we are now in the middle of May, okay, but we still haven't closed off April. So, April's waiting in the temporary file for us to, re to process, okay. So, what you do then is you go in and you put in a date range and you say from the 1st of April to the end of April or you put that into your, into your, into your, actual spreadsheet into your actual grid here you can see process from process until so in this case you're going to go from the 10th of the 15th to the 11th of the 30th and it's going to pick up the transactions even though you're ready in december and put them into recx where you could then do your bank reconciliation okay so if you want to do this so you can look at the timer here let's just look at this for a second so in that case you'd only leave you'd leave out the renumber create post da 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 and you'd only do a retrieve. So every day, you can say every 24 hours, go and retrieve those statements and it'll come in. Now, obviously, we've got new ideas that we'll put into the next version, like a starting time and all that other stuff, and also a different menu. But we have, this is already working very nicely. So what we do in my company is every day, you guys pay software assurance. And every morning, we want to normally have to log into the bank, uh, copy or paste those transactions from an exported file and then go and process that in Cashbook. Okay. Now, this retrieve will automatically, every 24 hours, fetch the statement, put it into our temporary file, and then all the, the user needs to do is print a report I've written that is in the, on the desktop to print the, the current day's software assurance. And that is all they have to do now, just print. Before that, to log in, download, copy, and import. Now, it's just a matter of printing a report. Okay, so that's a really useful feature for the actual retrieve. But you can go all the way. So what happens is if you want to do payment direct, so what you want to do is you want to update your customer's account every hour or every half an hour, et cetera. We've added two features. The one is this timer, which will go through all the processes for you every 15 minutes. Number two, it will create an error list for you of all the transactions that did not go through. Not So it doesn't interrupt your batch create like it used to. It will actually put them into, a, into an error report and you can go back and fix those entries. Okay. And number three, it will actually post and do everything for you and update the customer's account. So what that means is, if a customer does a payment in the morning at half past 10, half past 11, that will be reflected in their account. Now, that is really nice. That is something that is only available on huge mainframes and huge systems. I've always used the example of DSTV. <laughs> Don't tell me it's a ripoff. I mean, that's a separate issue. But DSTV, you do a payment on your bank using a, a, um, an approved beneficiary and you pay your DSTV account, okay, you can then go into that account 15 minutes later and it will be reflected in their account. That's exactly what this does. And that's exactly what you want to do. I'm going to show you it live in a few minutes. Okay, right, so retrieve. So let me go back to the flowchart. So if you have all of them on and you say every 15 minutes, it will do a retrieve, it will do a process, bringing in those transactions for that particular date, renumber everything, Create the batch, post the batch, and post Rec Express, and it'll be done automatically. No user intervention and no errors that should be created now because we create an error list. So if anything that didn't have the right GL account or was unmatched, it didn't have whatever, you can go look at the error report, go back in there and fix them before it runs it again. Or you can obviously pause the uh, timer and, and, and do it again. Okay, so that's the idea of this. Is, are we calling it pay direct? although it's actually processed direct, more than pay direct. Okay. Right, this is the live example I'm going to be doing. I love live, you know, it's always a challenge. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so let me just not 
talk about that feature yet. Let's just do this. Okay, so what we do here is we go to the timer. Okay, we set the interval to two minutes. Okay, and we say use timer. Okay, once you say use timer, it's now ready to be activated. Okay, so we say activate timer. Do you want to activate it? We're going to add one more feature to this in the future, and then it's going to be, do you want to continue? And it's going to actually ask you, as you say yes, do you want to run it now? We thought that would be a good idea, because if you said 24 hours, you have to wait 24 hours before it runs. So we're going to allow it to be run straight away, and then every 24 hours thereafter. So now we're waiting two minutes, and this two minutes always is a long time when you're doing a live demo. So before I go any further, anybody else, any comments, any ideas, any feedback that you would like to hear about this before I go any further? I like Derek's inter inter I like that Derek, so maybe a bit more. Anybody else <laughs> want to talk to me about this before it goes and does the process? Silence. I know it's quite a lot to absorb. Um, these new features are incredibly powerful, and when you start using them, for example, this multiple grid. When you look at the multiple grid, we've only got ten banks listed here. Imagine you've got fifty banks. 50 banks. Now, what you'd normally do is some guy or a person would be sitting there and they'd process one bank at a time, fetch the statement, process the statement, look at what's uh, what's not been matched correctly in the rules, then normally one or two entries in the other rule, then go create the, do the renumber, then do the batch, then do the post, then the next bank, then the next bank. That would take literally, let's say it took 20 minutes per bank, okay, or 15 minutes per bank. 50 banks later, 50 times 15 minutes is a long time, or even 10 banks. That's 150 minutes, okay, which is a long time. With this new multiple grid, they all get done within five minutes. A huge difference in the world of, 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 of bank reconciliations. And I know that most companies, have at least five banks, at least five banks. Okay, so this multiple grid is worth looking at and seeing what you can do with this with the client. I'm using it now just for four banks myself, and it used to take me two hours to do the four banks. Right, here it goes. So now what it's doing is it connects to the server, it retrieves the statement, inserts them into Rec Express, okay, matches them, okay, then does the next step, okay, opens the file, posts the batch. And it'll now do it for every single bank. Look at that. I think that's pretty cool. Sorry, I really think that is, <laughs> I've always had a bit of a passion for our product, but that is really, I can really literally say that is the ultimate way of true automation. Okay, listen to me. <laughs> you think, you know, I'd slow down, but I don't. I think this is amazing. Come on, somebody Powerful. tell me. It. I, I will Come say on. it. Yeah. I'll say it. Powerful. <laughs> <laughs> but again, Wayne, we're it's all amazing. biased, aren't we? We're, we're from Parasol. <laughs> This is amazing. I mean, this is fantastic. I mean, I just sit here with my four silly little banks and I have to go, each one and read number and create the batch, even though that was already saving me days, it was still a pain in the neck. It was still a pain in the neck. So now I just go to this, hit the button, and it does it all for me. Okay. Um, there's a few things I'm going to add to this when we finish this, and you can see it's going through each one now, all of them. And now this data is available for you. It's sample data. And if you set this up and you show the client this, it will run perfectly for you. Um, we'll uh, put a document. Can we put a document together, Natty, where to put the files? Yes, yeah. I'm Except just in the process of trying to get rid of our personal information that is in the sample okay. data, okay. and then I will be able okay. to make it public. Cool. You need with to put the, document. the path. Mm -hmm. You need to have set up all the SFTP for them, et cetera, and maybe, um, you know, the problem is I think we use local for yeah, some we, of it, so you don't have a SFTP server, you can just use a local server. Am I right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So we've created a folder mm. system in, on our machine, on our actual server. Um, yeah, that one there. You can actually see them being picked up. You can see them being fetched from this local server. This is now a local SFTP. You don't have 
FTP for this. You can just use a local folder, obviously, and not have to set up the whole SFTP uh, two factor and one factor and all that stuff. Okay, so that's available. You are welcome to give us a shout and say do you have half an hour. We'll quite happily go through it with you privately. Mm -hmm. So you can have yourselves and set it up yourselves. Um, and Natalie and Azza will be available for you at any time. Been working hours, okay, and and <laughs> help you set and get it running for you. And then once it's running, you do a DB load. You can do it as often as you like, and you can actually show the client. Okay, the same with the SFTP and the EFT batches. Okay, look at this. We've now done. You've got to be honest. This is got to be the way you go. I mean, this is the ultimate, especially when you've got all your rules set up correctly, etc. This is now come to the end. Okay. Um, while we're doing this, I'll just keep mentioning a few things to you. Um, the uh, bank feeds, we've also um, been talking a lot to Sage with the bank feeds, and we eventually got um, them to show us how we can integrate the bank feeds directly into RecX. So what we do now is, um, I'm going to show you when we do the rules in a minute, you create a, what we call an E statement, and then instead of having SFTP, you can then link your banks in the bank feed, and then you can click a button in the retrieve, and it will now retrieve your bank statements from the bank using the, cat, um, the um, Sage bank feed straight into our temporary file. That is, that's very handy when you don't have a format for certain banks written by Perisoft, but they are available in the bank feed, and you can then retrieve the bank straight into the into the into the temporary file in Rec Express, and then do the processing from there with the bank feed, and it'll be built into Rec Express. You won't have to go to bank services and do anything there. That's coming out as well. We hope to have it finished in the next couple of days. Hey Wayne, what did you say? I can fail as quickly as you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> as fast as you like. As fast as um, you like. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm about, almost there. About a week yeah. away from total completion okay. now. Yeah, so that'll probably come, it won't be out in the PU. Uh, it will only be out in the um, fix later on. Okay. But I don't think many people use the bank feeds. I don't think, in fact, anybody in South Africa uses the bank feeds. Okay. And you can see here, it's done a huge amount of work. And it's all clearly listed for you in your errors. That, for example, validation process failed. Account codes can't be blank. Okay, and it puts them there into the into leaves them in Recix and shows you which banks are a problem. You can go fix them. So what we're doing now is we do not stop the batch process like we're doing at the moment. If you wanted to stop, you can run the normal Rec Express, and which is the Rec Express uh, platform. Or if it's in the grid and you're running it here, the, the actual errors are now put into a log file, and you can go back to those entries and and edit them and add them to the rules if necessary, and then repost the process by running the process again. That was actually quite handy because, for example, you might have is at the moment it's a bit sluggish because we you have a batch you want to thousand entries and ten of them have invalid GL accounts. It stops on each one, you know, and you have to go back and re test it. Okay, the problem is it'll stop 10 times, which is a bit cumbersome and a bit slack. This way, it only stops at the end, okay? Now, you might say to me, but I don't want to go, I want this feature in RecX itself, but you can do that here, and I'll show you what you can do, is you can obviously not select the banks. So what you could do is you could do one bank at a time and do the new processing for that one bank and create the errors without stopping the batches. So if you say to it, for example, you switch off these selects here, you can then say, I only want to process. Okay, it's a bit slow there, Wayne. I think uh, it's no, of... you've got to deactivate the, my... the timer. Yeah, correct, the timer is still running. Ah, okay, cool. Okay, so there's a feature I didn't even realize. So if the time is running, you've got to deactivate the timer first before you can edit anything. Cool, okay, that makes sense to a certain point, because you don't want to start editing, and then the timer kicks in in every minute. Okay, cool. Well, well thought, everybody, well thought. 
Just yeah, to so say, you, you can still go yeah. into your bank code via the, the field uh, with the, the I there, but yeah, every other field cannot be changed. Okay, so that's still a bit dangerous though, Matthew, because if you go in there and then the timer kicks in, would it be processing that bank you're in? Um, it, uh, when? It'll skip you'll, only, you'll only go into that bank in um, view mode, read only, yeah. maybe to check oh. balances, check something. If the time is running, Brilliant. remember that okay, cool. the timer will lock each bank as it processes it. So yeah, so what you can do here is you can see I've only selected two banks. So I could do the two banks. I could then fix those, do those, and then run the process again. Okay, and it'll only obviously kick in for those two banks and ignore the others. So you can do have a bit of flexibility here. And I like what you're saying about the timer being on. You can't edit while the timer is on. Dead right. I think that's a very good idea. Okay, so just before I move on, any questions on this at the moment? Dead silence. A lot to absorb there eh, when you think about it. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Okay, okay, so, okay, now what, okay, so let me go one step further. Okay, so what we've done is we've got a timer in Rec Express, we've got a timer in the EFT, and it's all processed. You can leave this running. On a machine, uh, on a computer that is only going to do this, and you don't have to go there. You can go at the end of the day and look at your processes and fix what you want at four o'clock in the afternoon. You can update your customer accounts directly now. Okay, you can have even your own payments. You can then update accounts payable directly as well and keep that up to date in an hourly basis. Those are very big features for 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 corporates who want to keep their accounts current. Okay, and have less processing at the end of the month or the end of the week because they can pick up the errors straight away. So there's a whole bunch of new features that we've added to Cashbook to bring it into the true automation uh, era of the world. And uh, when you're referring it to true, it works like true automation and not just some buzzword out there. Okay, and you don't have to use a, a bank download anymore. You can get the banks and they're all doing this now. All the banks do upload to SFTP sites and they are available for you to use as a bank feed to process your bank statements correctly. So everything is, is available currently from most of the banks. Now the bank feed Rec Express is pretty uh, flexible because it's, it's basically all you wanna do is make sure you've chosen the correct template in the rules and the correct format for that bank and then it works. You don't have to sit there worrying what format are we using, okay? It's mostly available already as to the formats that are going to be sent by the bank. Anybody want to add anything to my comments before I go to the next feature? No, I didn't think so. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so finally, um, so what we then realized that our rules were not quite flexible enough to what we wanted. And we've realized that from, the, again, the client helped us do this. And most of the clients, if you have a, a suggestions come from clients and that's why we've got so many features in our product is that we listen to the client and we listen to what they want or, or yourselves and we try and put your features into our product as often as possible okay for example i think we had a, a user suggest or derek i think suggested to have better authorizations in in in, in our product and we're going to look at doing that for the next version as well and a few other things i'll mention in our roadmap okay so please don't be scared to ask. I mean, don't be shy to ask. Ask us for new features. If they're viable or they're worthwhile doing, we will then put them into our system. Okay. So what we did was we've realized that the, the, the rules were not flexible enough when it came to AP or AR uh, transactions. Okay. So for example, whoops, in the wrong field, doesn't matter. Okay. So what we did was we added one more feature to the rules at the moment. This is coming out in PU2. And that is we, instead of putting in, at the moment you had to put in the customer number here. Okay, the problem with that is if you have 200 customers, you'd have to have 200 rules. Okay, we didn't like that. So we had to change that. So what we did was we changed the entry type not just to have, sorry, not just to have cash book accounts payable accounts receivable, okay? Now we've added what we call the actual 
miscode vendor number and customer number. A miscode with prefix, I'll explain in a minute, and vendor with prefix, I'll tell you why there are two types here. If you choose, for example, customer with prefix or customer, this is a case of, is this a customer with prefix rule or not? I don't have to save it, but I won't worry. Okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, so what we've done here is, if you say customer with prefix, you can then put in a prefix here. And this prefix will identify using the reference from the bank where the customer number is stored in the reference. So if you look, I'm just trying to see if I've opened that particular file. Okay. Um, have I got to unzip it again? Hey, I've got to unzip it again. No problem here. Extract here. It's going to go yes to all. Okay. So I'm going to look at CTAC and I'm going to look at the actual. ASCII file. Now, if you look here, okay, we've got CUS. Now, if you look in this file, you've got CUS there. Can you see that? So, what it'll do, it will pick up the CUS for this rule, okay, and pick up that it's a 101 transaction, 101 there. And after that, it will look for the numeric of the customer number automatically, up to 12 characters. And it'll pick that up and put that into the Rec Express customer number field for you. Okay, so you can have CUS 12110, uh, 22500. You can have unlimited customers now in your reference. Okay, and you can see in this case here, we've also even got an invoice number. So if the customer enters the transaction and puts in this particular, I'll tell you how you must do this with your customer in a minute, and puts in the invoice number dash cus1210, it will automatically pick up the customer number, look for the invoice by looping through all these invoices and actually allocate this entry to the correct invoice. Okay, now that is a very nice feature if they, of course, enter it correctly, which I'll mention in a minute. Okay, but of course, you know, you've got the different auto allocates. You can do prepay, you can do, um, you can auto allocate from document number onwards, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it will then automatically pay those invoices according to the way you want it to pay. Okay, so you can use different prefixes for different customers. Now, some people might use the customer number only. And some people might say we'll put in the actual prefix as part of the customer number. So they would have CST12345. The point of them doing it with the prefix in the number is when the client enters the reference, they wouldn't have to worry that they would leave out the CST because it would be part of the customer number. It would save the client making a mistake when they entered the customer number. If they do it without the CUS, you would then have to tell the client you've got to use CUS and then the number. Now, the first thing people say to me, <laughs> I love this part, is how do we get them to do this correctly? Okay, because the biggest problem we have is the client just goes in there and puts in payment or they put in a uh, uh, cloudy day. I'm just being I'm exaggerating now. Or they don't put in the correct reference. Now, you can tell the bank, and this is what the corporates do, and they do a lot of them, a lot of them do this, all the businesses, and create what they call an approved beneficiary. It's one round 25, except, or something like that, per, per approved beneficiary or something, or 50 cents or something. And you can then tell the bank exactly how the customer must enter their reference when they enter their payments. This is the, and, and then what you would do is, in the actual customer's statement, you would add to the statement their reference that they want the client to enter. So when the client gets their statement, they could look at the bottom of the statement and would say reference, and that would reference would be exactly how they need to enter it into the bank. Okay, the bank itself then will validate that reference for you, and as they're entering it, it would stop them if it's wrong. This is how it works with telecom. If you pay a telecom account, you choose the beneficiary, which is, of course, telecom, and then it forces you to enter the references on your statement and forces it to be correct. And that's how you would use the system properly with the proper entry point. And it's definitely worth it because you can imagine of the lack of, 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 of having to worry how to enter it yourselves and to get the right payments made. 
So let's just repeat that. To make sure that the customers are entering the correct references, you would get an approved beneficiary set up for the customer, for the client. Now, some of your clients already have approved beneficiaries, so they might just use the same one. And you'd make sure it's correct, and you'd give it to the bank. The bank then sets up an approved beneficiary with the with the with the um, with with the client, and then they tell them what do you want them to enter, and you'd say I N blah 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 dash. C-A-U-S, and then at the bottom of the statement, you can actually change the client statement that they're sending to the client to put the actual reference they have to enter when they do the payments. I think that's really something you should offer your clients, and I think it's worth discussing it with big clients and people that want to do this. Okay, so we've put that into Cashbook, and with the C-U-S-T and the C-U-S and the prefix and the number, we've allowed you to give that service to your client. And I think it's a really powerful service. Now, just one more thing. I don't know many companies that do this, or many accounting software programs that do this. I can tell you one that does, it's called SAP, but they do it customized per customer and they charge a fortune, a fortune, like way beyond my, our imagination. And I think offering the customer this kind of service at the cost of, of 300 is definitely a great selling point and a, and a great feature you can give the client. Okay. Great. Okay, so that's the end of my PUs. Um, let me just see now. Let me go back here and just hit the go button. Okay, I've got to find the go button. That's underneath my, my video camera. Right. So there's your live example of Rec Express Timer. Okay, there's just a summary again of the new entry type in, 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 in the uh, rules. Okay. Okay, it just gives you a um, Okay, I've given you a live example already of the of the entry types. I'm not going to go deeper than that. I think it's enough enough for you to absorb already. Okay, I'm going to go to the roadmap in a minute, but I just want to show you one more thing. I want to show you one more thing uh, before I go any further, and that is when we release the bank feeds. Okay, what you'll do is if you want to create a bank feed that we don't have a a layout for, but it's in the bank feed. You'll be able to enter what we call an e statement. The e statement then knows it's going to be a bank feed. Okay. And then and there isn't a button here yet. Wayne's going to give it to us soon where you'll be able to link it to the bank. Okay. And then when you're going to Rec Express, okay. So I'm going to go here to RecX. And you open up your Rec Express. And you go to process statement. Okay. It will then know this is a bank feed. This one isn't because it hasn't got the E statement. Okay. It will know it's a bank feed and allow you to actually hit the yes button and it will go using the bank feed and retrieve the transactions for you. This will be a different process to the SFTP process. Okay. That will also be in the next version uh, in the next hotfix, probably in the next two or three weeks' time. Okay. That's just to give you an idea where we're going in the future. Okay, cool. We've got the actual process now. You don't have to go here, which is actually sitting in uh, common services at the moment, and do this. You wouldn't have to do this anymore. Okay. You just go CCB for fun, and you can connect to bank. This will all be built into Cashbook and not here. So this is now what's happening here. And okay. I don't know if you've seen this before, but this is the bank feed. The thing I like about the bank feed, okay, is that it doesn't only have your bank. It has all kinds of other banks. Look at this. Diners. Kalula. <laughs> okay. Hey, my BMW. Where's my Audi? Uh, it's not my Audi, you know what I mean? Amazing. All these accounts are available using the bank feed. We wouldn't write these formats for you. So they're also going to be available for Cashbook and Rec Express in the future. Again, directly in Rec Express, not via the bank services. Okay. Great. I think we're going places here, big time. And I think this is going to be amazing. Okay. Great. Before I move on to our road map, does anybody, and there's a lot to absorb here, a hell of a lot, does anybody, 
have any questions. Sure. Silence. Mm -hmm. No questions. Any questions? Nothing. Great. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so finally, we're going to have 2025 coming out in the next few months, and we have added a few features as well to 25. Um, if you've got anything else you want to add to 25 that you think could be done in the in that time, um, whatever, um, time limit, please let us know. And let us know in the next day or two, because we are going to start doing that as soon as we've recompiled our web and released the PU. Okay. There are four things we're going to be adding. Okay. Recurring batches, because we now create EFT batches um, in the old, uh, you know, what the kind client can do currently is they import a batch into uh, into their bank and they can then do it for the next month. They can export it and re-import it into the bank. So we thought, well, if we're doing EFT, you're not going to the bank. So what we'll allow to do is allow you to create a recurring batch and you'll go and create a batch and then you can select another batch and it will bring it into that batch automatically and it'll let you choose which entries to bring in and obviously change the date and change the reference. To be unique. Okay. Authorizations. This was suggested by a couple of people. We need to authorize our EFTs at different levels where we have different miscellaneous codes. We want to change the miscellaneous code and then don't allow them to approve it. They need to be approved by somebody else. We're going to add that as well to the 2025 release. And we're going to obviously get a bit more feedback from the people who wanted it to make sure that we're doing it correctly and in, 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 in enough information that's going to be completely authorized proof or something well, I'm looking for words there but it's going to be nice and tight and it's going to be properly done okay and then of course we're also going to have default entry types so what's going to happen there is at the moment you can select cash book arap we're going to allow you to say to it only defaulted to ar so if somebody's only entering ar payment batches or um, an ap payment or ar batches it will then when you open batch entry it will default not to cb it will default to ar or ap again to speed up the entry and to lock it in for that particular user and lastly we're going to add the daily recurring timer which we've got 24 hour at the moment but we'd like to add a start date and a start time to that as well so when they're going to the time they can say start this timer tomorrow morning at seven o'clock in the morning for example okay those are the four features we're adding. Okay, so just briefly, here is an example of the recurring batch. You'll be able to copy existing batches from the, you can choose whichever batch you want, and it will then bring it into your batch and change the date. The, there's one form that's missing at the moment, which we're going to also add. When you pull up this batch, it will give you a list of all the entries with a checkbox on the left, and you can then say to it, only select the following entries into the recurring batch. Okay, so you can bring in as many batches as you like into one new batch and select the entries you want only. Okay, and that's going to be our recurring batch. Okay, it's a very simple, straightforward way of doing recurring batch. We're not going to have a recurring batch type. It's going to be at your point at, at your pointer whenever you want to use it. Okay. Okay, that's the only screen we have. Fascinating. <laughs> okay, obviously the other new features haven't got screens yet but they will be added. That's going to be our roadmap. Again, I'm going to repeat, please ask us if you want anything else to be put into 2025. We're very keen to add things. We don't want to go too crazy. We've only got a few months left before the release of 25. And already you can see we've got quite a full roadmap, but we will look at other features if they're simple and easy to put in. Okay. Anything quickly before I go to the last slide? No. Okay. Resources. We create a knowledge base. This has been told before, but we're repeating as a keyword creates a knowledge base. Every time we create a new SFTP link, um, and we're using the uh, EFT link, we give you a knowledge base. You can download them. It tells you what to do, how to contact the bank, where to do whatever, what format to use, and et cetera, et cetera. Very useful when you create your first installation, show it to the client, the client can get hold of their bank. You know the right people, get the interface working, etc. As you can see, we've only got NetBank and Standard Bank. Um, we've started APSA. Um, are we busy with APSA still um, yet, um, Azar? Yes, but Okay, cool. I think you've only got the first bit going there. Hey, am I right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Okay, so yeah, 
So, Aubrey, if you want to talk to us about um, APSA, get hold of us afterwards and we'll tell you where we're stuck and you can maybe push them or whatever. I don't think you can. These banks have their own IT departments and they do their own thing. Okay, obviously, um, as I has done great work on the help, please don't hesitate to ask us to add more to the help. Because I think, as am I right? As you're keen to add, am I right? Yeah, whatever they need added to the help, just let me know and I'll add it for, for you. Yeah, very useful for the clients, very useful. And you can see we've got some really good resources on the right here. Solution centers, training videos, mastering, really nice stuff here. So that's the help has become exceedingly better. Lastly, we've got Perisoft in the news. Uh, on our website, you can go look at our articles. And and if you want to do some articles with us, please get a hold of us and say, listen, we've got a, a, a success story we'd like to, to to bring out there with a client. And we don't mind doing those. We're paying X amount to IT web for those articles. We sometimes run out of articles to do. Um, so we're keen to get a few in there with you guys. And um, there's no charge. It's free of charge. And if there's too many, we'll maybe look at even opening up some more uh, facilities available for us at IT web. So please get a hold of us. We're keen to get involved with this. We're keen to add articles. We're keen to promote our software. Um, we obviously want to focus on Cashbook. Um, we'll do a little bit of 300, but we really luck. We're very happy that Sage themselves are actually focusing on 300. Not enough. I can't lie, not enough. But still, it's better than last year. It's a huge improvement, and we have pushed for that. And it seems to have come through quite a lot. They got our message. How far they go is it's quite scary to think they still don't think we should be on their on their uh, partner um, webinars. In fact, I'm quite in a body peril, not impressed. So I will deal with that later <laughs> because I can't believe they actually didn't invite us. But anyway, that's a separate issue. But we're very keen to to do articles, et cetera, and more um, more stuff out there, more advertising, et cetera, for our products. Okay, so please don't. And I think that's it. 40 years, Parasol. Thank you for. I'm actually 41 years now. So, as they put it to me, you know, um, 41 years of this experience is certainly quite something, and it's stronger than ever. Let me put that forward to you. Stronger than ever. I think that's really something, something to be proud of on all, all of us. Thank you very much, everyone. Let's ask any questions from this point. Okay. I think Derek, you had your hand up. I'm not sure. No, 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 I'm done. Thanks. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> oh, I Derek. saw you raise it. I saw you <laughs> raise it, Derek. No, 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 not, not this time. But yeah, thanks, Bobby, for 40 years or 41 years, man. We appreciate 41 it. 41 years. Thank yeah. you, Derek. No, yeah, thanks, no. man. You were there for long. I can see, yes, we are. I can see a lot of new changes. We just wait for yes. that, um, that approval thing on EFTs yes. because the clients yes. are really pushing for that. Now we're going to do that as soon as as soon as we yeah. release the PU. We'll probably be getting hold of you just to improve our spec to okay. make sure that we're on the right track. Because really, I, I fully agree with you. It's it's got to come in because yeah. our EFT system with this new upload is so nice. And to put that in, as you yeah. say, will be no, the definitely. final. Because I, I showed yeah. a client yesterday. They were uh, asking me about that again, and um, okay. it, I showed them the the audit report. So they said, "Yeah, that's it's lacquer." But mm. is there not a possibility that we can put a date range in there for now of because course. we don't have that approval to say, let's look at the last month, what changes were made on the EFT mm. bank details. So if we can update that just as a quick um, report update, that would be yeah. super for them. Then we don't have the, the wait for, uh, you know, well, obviously they can wait for the uh, approval uh, screen and the, those things. But if we can just change the report to say, Let's look at the last month. Was there any changes made to the EFT bank details and by whom? Yeah. That would be yeah. super. Easy. Those things are easy to put in. Date ranges are easy. Yeah. Okay. So please, we're going to get going on it very soon. Okay. All and right. We, yeah, but that, we've actually yeah, got the fields already in there. Yeah, we've already got the fields and, and the yeses and all that stuff in there to prove. We're even going to think of the way we want them to do the approval with a more efficient grid. Yeah. showing the entries, showing what's changed more efficiently. We're going to do a lot of work on that in the next version. We're going to make sure it's perfect. Okay, so okay. great. Yeah, thank you. Good, thank good. You, All right, thanks, Thank you guys. for your help.
And thanks yeah. for the compliment. I think you must compliment my staff that stuck with me for so long and I'm still here and they somehow didn't have to get some psychological help. So and well you've done, got, staff. You've got the and, new the new generation coming up and, and stepping up to the to the party as well, eh? So uh, oh, definitely. Asa and, and, and uh, Matt's mm-hmm. very well, yeah. Yeah, and you can see Azan that aren't shy to tell me exactly where to go, eh? Hey? <laughs> well, sometimes we've got to show you the way, Bob. <laughs> it's family, oh, family, eh? I love, I love it. It's lovely. Yeah, it really cool. is. I'm very stoked. It was so nice to have them at TPAC and showing everybody and being there and showing the products. And I must say, I said to, I said to my staff, oh, my best team has gone to TPAC. So Wayne said to me, well, what about us? Yeah. No, thanks. Uh, we appreciate it. Your egos. Yeah, thank you, David. No, thank you. <laughs> Wayne, did you hear that, way? <laughs> cool. Okay. Anything else? Thanks, Derek, and I appreciate your input.